Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. We will get started in about one to one and a half minutes. We just want to give everyone an opportunity to join us in the Zoom. Hope you're doing well this evening. We're doing pretty good. Pretty good. Gearing up about T minus, what is it, Maria? Three weeks until students return to campus? About three weeks, and we're ready. So. Yes. Or at least we think here. No, we are. <laughs> <laughs> We're excited. It's going to be a good fall. And yeah, we would love to know where you are zooming in from. So if you want to go ahead and tell us where you are zooming in, zooming in from, that would be awesome. I am zooming in from South Utica, New York, which is about exactly 16 minutes from campus. So I am just outside of Clinton, New York, where our campus is. Hello from Houston, Texas. So excited to see you in the Zoom. We'll soon learn where our students are zooming in from. We have some all from all over the place. What's up, Georgia? So exciting. So glad you could join us. Hampton Bays, awesome. And Florida, I'm the counselor for Florida. So make sure you take down my info. It's so excited to see everyone. Village of Clinton, hello. Let's see. Ethiopia, amazing. Hi, I am. Absolutely not sure what time it is, but I'm sure that it is quite the time difference. So I'm so excited you were able to jump in and join on with us. Hi from Pennsylvania. We have a couple Pennsylvania natives on the Zoom today. So that's exciting. Awesome. All right, so I will go ahead and get started. So my name is Joanne Pluff. Uh, Joanne Pluff. Congratulations, all of you, on being named College Prep Scholars. I know that the road has been difficult and so exciting, and you should definitely be proud of your achievements as you're taking steps to figure out where you're going to call home next year. Um, this panel is specifically dedicated to our QuestBridge College Prep students. And joined with me are some members of the QSN, the QuestBridge Scholars Network, and Dean Maria Hanau Ohms are the my co-advisor for the QSN network. So tonight we're going to talk about Hamilton in general, our college community, answer any of your questions about the application process, and any burning questions you might have. So please feel free, know that we have my colleague actually the Dean of Admission here at Hamilton is in the chat. Um, she's happy to answer any questions. And we also have a Q&A. So if there is a specific question you want the panel to answer, go ahead and put it right in the chat or Q&A and know that um, Peaches, our Dean of Admission, will pass it over to me. So let's start with some introductions. Maria, Dean Maria, if we could have your name, position, um, a description of some of your roles on campus, uh, fun fact, and if you'd like to share your pronouns. Absolutely. So hi, everybody. Um, my name is Maria Hanau Ohms. I serve as Associate Dean for Diversity and Inclusion at Hamilton College. I am based in the Dean of Students office, um, which is a group of great people. Um, and in my role, I actually, um, one of my favorite things that I get to do is I get to co-advise the Questbridge Scholars Network along with Joanne and work with the amazing scholars on our campus. Uh, and I also get to work with our cultural center. I oversee our interfaith and spirituality area, which is our chaplain's office. Um, I also work alongside our accessibility office, which is disability resources, and then also um, international programs. So I have a variety of spaces that I navigate in, which is really wonderful. Um, and let me see, a fun, fact about me. So a fun fact is that um, I actually did not start. So when you hear that your career <laughs> will probably not necessarily be a completely straight road, um, I think I'm an example of that. Before I came to higher education, I was a television producer for many years. So that's a fun fact. It is a fun fact. Yeah. So know that Maria is one of your direct connections to a lot of resources on campus, 
And throughout the year, you'll be hearing from both of us about what you need. And don't forget, if you need something, you should definitely come and see us for sure. So let's go ahead and we will introduce our students. So students, we would love to hear your name, pronouns if you're comfortable, year, hometown, major, minor, a couple of activities that you're involved in, um, and just a fun fact about you. So let's start with Ms. Fatima. All right, hi everybody. Um, my name is Fatima Oliva. I'm a rising junior. I use she, her pronouns. Um, I'm an environmental studies major. A couple of things I'm involved with on campus. I'm actually gonna be on student assembly um, this upcoming year. I'm also one of the hub coordinators for Sunrise Movement. Um, and I'm a tour guide and I work at the Wallet Museum. Uh, Fatima, and you're on campus right now, right? I am, yes. And why are you on campus? Um, I'm doing research um, for the Environmental Studies Department. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, Raymond, you're up next. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Raymond. I, I use he, him, his pronouns, and I am from the class of 2024, so I will be a sophomore at Hamilton College. My hometown is Mount Juliet, Tennessee, which is a suburb of Nashville, Tennessee, and I think I'm planning on majoring in government and possibly double majoring in sociology. At campus, I am the secretary of student assembly. So I'm with Fatima and I am also the treasurer of the gender and sexuality union. And one fun fact about myself is um, if I could have any superpower, it would be teleportation because I am lazy and don't like to move. Plus it's good for the environment. <laughs> Fair enough, Raymond. Um, okay, so we have two Maya spelled differently. So let's start with Maya who's in class of 2024. Yeah, <clears throat> hello. Sorry if my voice sounds a bit gravelly. I'm still recovering from a sore throat, but um, my name is Maya Dumagawa. Uh, I use she, her, or they, them pronouns. I'm a sophomore. I was born in Poland, but moved to Philadelphia at a very young age and grew up there. I am planning to be a creative writing and women's and gender studies double major. This upcoming year, I'm really excited to be a peer counselor and a writing center tutor on campus. And I've also been involved in Red Weather since last year. And my fun fact is um, that for many years, I was really set on being a psych major in undergrad. And that changed as soon as I went to Hamilton, even though I was convinced that it wouldn't, because that's just how it goes. Like Maria said, not linear. Awesome. And Miss Maya. Okay, hello everyone. I'm Maya Wynn Haberneski, class of 2023. I went to high school in Missoula, Montana, but I actually moved to the East Coast before my freshman year. Um, let's see, I'm majoring in theater. Um, possibly double majoring in French, but if that doesn't work out, it's probably gonna end up as a minor. Um, <laughs> and in terms of what I'm involved with on campus, I started attending French club this past year, it's super fun. Um, I also was the education and advocacy chair for Untitled at Large, which is Hamilton's like student theater company. Um, and I've also been involved with some of the main stage theater productions on campus, which has been super fun. Um, in terms of a fun fact, I have a twin sister who goes to Vassar. So cool. <laughs> All right, awesome. So I just wanna remind everyone, please feel free to use the chat. If there's something that comes up while the students are talking or questions that we ask, um, that's the quickest way for me to get your attention. I know we have a couple hands raised. I won't be able to attend to you that way, but if you put it right into the chat, I'm happy to bring it up to the students. Um, all right, so let's get started. Let's start with our older panelists. So this one I'll direct towards Fatima or Maya. Um, so can you share with us a little bit about your college search in the end? Um, and why did you end up choosing Hamilton? I can go first. Um, so I obviously applied through Pressbridge um, to Hamilton. I didn't really know Hamilton before 
I started applying through QuestBridge. So I like kind of looked through that list that QuestBridge has of all the colleges that they're partnered with. Um, and I kind of did most of my research um, like online, I guess about colleges. I didn't really have the opportunity to travel to different places to um, visit colleges. A lot of it really was online and doing virtual tours and stuff. Um, and like, I knew I wanted to go somewhere like that was in the Northeast, um, just because I want to experience a different climate that I was like used to. I'm from Las Vegas. Um, so it's a very different climate here compared to Las Vegas. Um, and I think I, I really liked Hamilton because of, I guess how like close knit the community was here. But then also we had like the open curriculum, which like I really enjoy having. I didn't really know what I wanted to do before I came to Hamilton. And so that kind of gave me the opportunity to, I guess, figure that out for myself. Awesome. Maya, do you have anything you want to add? Yeah, I mean, I'm, my story is very similar to Fatima's, but um, yeah, I applied through QuestBridge. Um, Hamilton was actually the last school that I ranked um, and I got matched, which was awesome. And I remember like the day that I got my acceptance, I was like, okay, cool. I got into Hamilton. Now I need to like research why I put it on my list again. Um, <laughs> but like, I, I think my mom encouraged me to put it on my list. Um, I was really attracted to the open curriculum. Um, and yeah, I just, yeah, that's, I'm going to end it there. <laughs> awesome. Um, and I'll put this one out to Maya and Raymond, just because you just recently finished, you know, your first year college process, everything like that. So can you tell me what stood out to either one of you, um, Maya, if you want to go first, what stood out to you about Hamilton? Yeah, of course. Um, I think like Fatima said, um, it was probably the community for me. I got a chance to visit when I was researching different schools. And even though I went to a few other colleges, um, the, it was Hamilton that I felt was the most hospitable and welcoming. And like the energy was just really there. And my dad noticed that too. He absolutely loved Hamilton. Um, and it also really struck me that students on campus really seemed to be exploring their interests in ways that Hamilton's um, open curriculum and other things about it really allowed students to do, um, which I also really appreciated because I don't really like being restricted and I have a wide range of interests. So that was probably what stuck out to me the most. Thank you. Raymond, do you have anything you want to add? Okay, so I'm actually, I actually not get matched, but so, so I was looking at a bunch of different schools and stuff. So to be completely honest, one of the biggest things I was looking at in the school was the amount of financial aid they were giving. So to be completely honest, that was a big reason why I chose Hamilton. They give, the financial aid office here is pretty great and very accommodating with you and like your life situations and stuff like that. But like, besides that, the other reasons why I chose Hamilton is because like many of you all said, the open curriculum is pretty awesome. I, it really prioritizes learning and education because it lets you decide what you want to learn pretty much. And it's also great if you don't know what you want to like go into because you can explore so many different options. And it's just the communications I've had with like many of the people and workers here were phenomenal. Like I would email like someone in admissions and then like an hour later they will respond back and it's just not something I would see in every college so it just seems like this school really cares about their students so that's mainly why I chose Hamilton. Awesome thank you so much for sharing that and you all really this is my next question it really is based about our academics and the academic environment and the open curriculum um, so Fatima can you describe for us or in your own words what is the academic environment? at Hamilton like? I feel like it's very collaborative. Um, I feel like people don't really like aren't competitive about their academics here. I think most like once we get here, a lot of us realize that like, yes, like these classes are really hard um, and we're not gonna get through them if we're not like helping each other out. Um, so like a lot of it is like just working together with friends. Um, and then like, I think we're also just very open to exploring new things as well because of the open curriculum. 
because of the open field, we have the opportunity to, I guess, um, find new things that we're interested in, um, which like I think is a really big change, especially for people who went to like public high schools where like curriculums were already set for you. Um, so I think like that's like a really big thing on campus as well, like just exploring new things. Yeah, definitely. So from your perspective, Maya, class of 2024, um, what would you say it's, how has it been, right? So this is your first year taking a look at it and kind of figuring it out, going it alone. How was it? Yeah, um, I would say that it was honestly a really good um, transition for me, despite, you know, the pandemic and COVID and everything going along with that. I really enjoyed my time on campus and specifically academically speaking, since, you know, that's what Fatima was just covering. I really loved all the classes I took. I'm planning on being a double major and I'm on track with that, but I still got to take linguistics classes, art classes, all these different classes that I feel like at a lot of other schools that have more um, set programs and more set, you know, um, schedules in regards to those that I wouldn't have gotten there. Whereas I did get that at Hamilton and yeah, it's just been great. That's awesome. So we're going to do a quick lightning round. I'll ask all of you all the same question with the exception of Maria, but you may have a favorite class. So starting with Maya, class of 2023, 20, favorite class. Um, I got to do an independent study on Vietnamese water puppetry. So cool. Fatima, favorite class. Can you beat that? <laughs> Carbon footprint. I don't think I beat that, but it was a good class. <laughs> Raymond, favorite class. I like a class called R race and religion it pretty much okay pretty much like it's sort of interest section of race and religion in the u.s pretty much it was very enlightening awesome maya favorite class i have like three favorite classes so i don't really think that this is fair um i would have to say intro to creative writing and then also give a shout out to language gender and sexuality and intro to photography very cool so Maya, class of 2023, can you talk about how, how is it to connect with faculty? Is it possible? Do you know their names? Where are they? Can you find them? Yeah, I would say it's super easy. Um, so I guess I'll, I'll start with this. In the spring of 2020, um, we moved online and I was taking a history of theater course. Um, and for that course, we had like a final research research paper that we had to do. Um, and I had to end up switching my topic because um, I didn't really have access to the library resources. Um, but my professor was really accommodating and I approached her about doing the independent study. Um, and that just turned into a whole semester worth of studying Vietnamese water puppetry. Whereas like, you know, if I just did that final research paper, that would be like one to two weeks. Um, but in general, I, I do think the professors are like, you know, really there to help the students in that respect. Awesome. And Raymond, as a first year student, do you feel like you've had access to your faculty members, professors? Yes, definitely. I feel, I mean, I feel like of course with the pandemic, it was a bit weird, like getting in contact with your professors just because everything is online. But I think the our professors did a really good job of trying to accommodate with that. That's one of the perks of being in the small liberal arts schools. Professors are always available and like they just always seem to want to talk to you and like help you. Like my religion professor, I would always email her like every other day and she would always answer back. And it probably honestly kind of annoyed her, but she, but apparently she probably, she said she didn't annoy her. So I'm just going to take her word for that. Awesome. So the next question I have, I'm not actually sure if any of you have studied abroad. Have any of you studied abroad? No, Fatima, I know you were, were you planning to? No. So we do have a ton of study abroad options. Um, we will make sure that we enter the info to the study abroad website in the chat, but know that as a student, you do have the opportunity to do so. About 60% of our students study abroad and they go 
a ton of different places. So if you have your heart set on it, know that we will work with you to figure out where you can go. And it is absolutely up to you, your pre-major advisor, as well as your major advisor to determine when students can go. If you're ever interested, you can reach out to them directly, but know that all of your credits will transfer. Some of them have internship opportunities, some have research opportunities. So it's definitely something that our students do like to take advantage of. In fact, um, one of our senior fellows, she just graduated this past fall or spring rather, she spent her first spring on campus this past spring. So if you are committed and you wanna experience another part of the world, know that at Hamilton, we do make that happen for you. Anything to add about that, Maria? Um, the only thing that I would add, uh, in addition to the fact that, you know, Joanne mentioned, we will do everything we can to get you to where you want to go, is that there are aid opportunities. So if, if having enough aid to travel and go abroad and study where you want to study, whether it's one semester or a full year, um, the off-campus studies office will work with you around finding aid and grants and things of that nature. So don't let that concern hold you back. And it's never too early <laughs> to go meet the folks over there. So um, so I always encourage that, we you know, whatever you're thinking of doing down the line in your time at Hamilton or considering, you can walk in literally the first day of classes of your first year of the first semester and just start asking questions. You can never be too prepared. Yes. And if you're not interested in doing a full abroad experience, know that we also have study away options in New York City, Washington, Washington DC and Boston. So if you kind of just want to experience another part of the country, you know, maybe it's your first time to New York or maybe it's your, you want to check out Washington DC, you can do that while gaining college credits, living in Hamilton sponsored um, residential housing. There are tons of opportunities for you. Oh, this is a great question. So we're going to answer this one live. Um, so someone just asked, can you tell everyone about your favorite opportunity for experiential learning? Let's go with Fatima. Um, I think my favorite experience so far that has to do with experiential learning um, has been like the research opportunities I've had so far. Um, so I've done research both of my summers um, so far. So like my first summer, um, at Hamilton, I ended up doing research um, for the biology department. And then right now I'm doing research for the environmental studies department. Um, and like a lot of those opportunities I got simply through just reaching out to professors. Um, there wasn't really like an actual application process. I just reached out to them um, and asked them if they had any space in their labs available and what projects they were working on. Um, and then that's kind of how I got into those positions that I've had so far. Um, and a lot of those, like I've been offered to like continue my project that I have right now into the semester um, as well. So that's, I guess that's my favorite thing so far. Awesome. Maya, Maya, Raymond, do you have anything else you want to add to that about experiential learning? Go yeah. for it, Maya. Yeah. Yeah, just to add on to that, um, I feel like oftentimes when it comes to that type of learning, people usually think of specifically STEM related research. But as a creative writing major, I've gotten um, quite a bit of exposure to that so far, which I'm super grateful for. I reached out to my intro to creative writing professor in the spring, asking him if he would be willing to supervise the manuscript that I'm working on for the next few months. And he was super supportive with doing that. And I've been having regular Zoom meetings with him over the summer. Um, and he's just been giving me general advice about that. And that's been super cool. And I'm just totally blown away linking this, you know, previous question that we had about professors, how supportive they are and how much they want you to pursue your passions. I just think that's super amazing. That is awesome. Um, okay. I think we're switch gears just a little bit. Um, let's talk about living on campus and just community engagement. So Maria, I'll have you start the community engagement part from your office's perspective, and then we'll hear what the students have to say. Sure. So I um, belong to what's known as the Student Affairs Division. And so we are responsible for pretty much a lot of the co-curricular engagement that happens outside of the classroom. So um, if you're interested in exploring leadership opportunities, so um, student assembly was mentioned, that's connected to our student activities office. If you're interested in outdoor leadership, we have an outdoor leadership office where um, if you've never kayaked, hiked, biked, I mean, the students can share all of that 
with you if you're interested in being a guide. I mean, you have a lot of opportunities. It's a really unique department. Um, they also do pretty major trips. Um, they've gone to, oh my gosh, to like climb some of the tallest mountains in the world. I mean, it's, it's insane. It makes me wonder if I could turn back time and go back to college. Um, it, it's just awesome. Um, you know, and then, and so there's a lot of those opportunities that you can plug into, connect with, um, connect with just your interests and then just your curiosities. Um, we were talking before we hopped on, uh, Maya mentioned, Maya class of 23 <laughs> mentioned um, French club and, you know, and all of those things. So you can really find different co-curricular opportunities to engage in, in all of these, in all of these different spaces. Um, another thing that's connected to campus life is our residential life office. Um, so everyone has to live on campus. So, you know, the students, the scholars that are that are on the call can, can share more information about what it's like to live on campus. I don't live in a residence hall, but there are many different options. There are suites, there are doubles, there's all kinds of opportunities for you li to live in. There's sub-free housing um, that you can apply for. There's themed housing. One of my favorite themed housing is our mindfulness floor, which if you're interested in meditation, mindfulness practice, uh, that's a group for you. There's gaming. There's all kinds of opportunities um, to live and connect with people. The intention of our division is for you to learn how to engage with your peers and meet people whom you maybe would have not met before if you would have stayed at home or connected otherwise. So, you know, I think that that's really the through line and the major theme of um, the purpose of the campus life and student affairs division is thinking about how do you want to engage? Who do you want to be? Um, what are you looking to do and ways to really stretch your experience beyond the, uh, the curricular engagement in the classroom? Thanks, Maria. Um, so from your perspective, Maya 23, What's it like to live in the residence halls? Um, it's okay. I mean, it's definitely um, a big transition if you're used to like living at your home. Um, but I, I think freshman year, um, I'm, I'm pretty sure everybody gets a roommate. Um, and I think Res Life does a pretty good job of pairing people up um, with similar interests or even not similar interests, but yeah, they, get, they do a good job. <laughs> and my 24, so first year in the residence hall, what's some advice that students should know about residential living on, at a college campus? Yeah, I think um, like Maya said, it's definitely a big adjustment depending on where you're coming from and what you're used to in terms of your living style. Um, but I think uh, definitely in terms of having roommates and working all of that out, it's super important to you know, know how to set your boundaries and just to know how to navigate that in general, because even if you really love your roommate, it's probably inevitable that you're going to have, to have some conversations with them. So I would just you know, be prepared for that. And there's like a lot of really great advice that RAs have given me about that and in general. And yeah, I think just communication is key with that and with working that, all that out. Awesome. All right, y'all, lightning round again. And Maria, you can answer this, this one. So Raymond, favorite thing to eat on campus? Um, actually, I have multiple favorite things to eat at campus. So <laughs> there's Commons, which is the dining hall at Campfield, one, one of like four dining halls on campus. And there's this like pasta station there and from time to time they would have like pho there and oh yeah I'm a big noodle person so I really like that <laughs> awesome Fatima favorite thing to eat mine's the same as Raymond's so <laughs> my first year before COVID we had a noodle station every day for lunch um during weekdays at Commons and it was awesome I would always get the noodles nice Maya 23, favorite thing to eat? I'm going to have to go with cheesecake. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Dessert. Well done. Maya 24, favorite thing to eat? I really, I, I think in my opinion, um, diner is like the best. I love their cheese fries. I spend like a, so much time at diner. It's <laughs> kind of ridiculous. <laughs> Maria, favorite thing to eat? 
So I also have multiple favorites. So I would have to go with Maya, class of 24, diner's great. I love their Cobb salad and I put um, chicken strips on top with ranch dressing. It's awesome. And then I love McEwen breakfast. So whenever students want to meet, I just say to them, are you an early riser? Because I'll meet you for <laughs> breakfast and we'll meet over at McEwen. Um, and then when the little pub is open, which we had to close during COVID, um, whenever little pub does lunch, um, I try to head over and bring student or two or three with me um, to experience their pizza bar, which is actually awesome. pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> So let's talk a little bit about the transition as a first year student. So I'll throw this one to you, Maya, 24. Um, what is the transition like? You know, I know that your experience on campus was a little bit atypical, but did you feel homesick? How did you connect with students? Were there programs to help you with feeling homesick? What did you do? Yeah, I would definitely say that early on, I, pre I felt pretty homesick and I was just trying to figure out, you know, what communities on campus I belonged in and what I wanted to do. I'm also from Philadelphia, which is, you know, a big city. So that was a huge change of, change of pace for me. And I think the best way that, you know, I kind of figured that out was getting involved in clubs and organizations that I was passionate about or that sparked my interest. That was the biggest way that I met people and connected with them. And then also just, you know, reaching out to someone from my classes. Um, people on campus are usually really happy to socialize or to grab a meal. So I, I met a lot of people that way. And that really helped with my transition, just having that sense of community. Awesome. And for our two older students, Maya and Fatima, do you have anything to add about feeling homesick in your transition? Um, yeah, I think a lot of like the ways that I kind of felt with homesickness that first year um, was like through like the QSN events that we would have through the eboard. Like a lot of it was like just like nights like in like watching movies or doing like self care stuff uh, with a couple of friends. So I think that's kind of how I, how I dealt with it. Um, and then now that like I have like a job on campus and everything I, that I can afford it now, I can like buy like food from off campus and like just make stuff with my friends. So. Awesome. Uh, Maria, I'll give you this question. Uh, it's more of like a processing question. So does each dorm or residence hall have a bathroom on every floor? No, well, they do have bathrooms. Um, <laughs> that's a little um, question. <laughs> yes, that is a trick question. Um, so yes, the residence halls all have multiple bathrooms on the floors. There are some residence halls where you have to share bathrooms um, that have multi-stall showers and things of that nature. Um, depending on what residence hall you're in, you may have your own bathroom, um, but that has to do, you have to be accommodated for that. There's a request and all of that jazz. Um, but yes, there are bathrooms you might have to share, um, right? You might be showering with other people next to you and other showers. I mean, it's college. So yeah, um, but it's very secure. Yes, Maya. And yeah, students yeah. help me because I've been through all the residence halls, but I've not been in the bathrooms in the morning. <laughs> so. Yeah, just to add to that, um, in case, you know, we have any trans students on the call and this might be a concern because I know this was applicable to me, Hamilton can also accommodate with having um, you roomed with some other folks where you kind of share this small individual bathroom. So it's not the public bathrooms. So if that is a concern for anyone for any reason, um, you can definitely reach out and they can set you up with something for that. Thank you, Maya. Thank you, Maya. So we're gonna do one more lightning round question and then we'll switch gears a little bit. So Maya 23, favorite spot on campus. So in one of the theater spaces at Hamilton, there's like a tension grid that kind of looks above the stage and it's where um, people like hang lights and work with sound. That's definitely my favorite place. Cool, Fatima? Um, I'd have to say the Glen House. Ooh, good one. Maya 24. I really liked Opus, which I know that Opus isn't open anymore, but I'm sure that's general yeah. area is still going to be really good. It's still there. Don't worry. And we tasted the food. We're very excited. Uh, Raymond, favorite spot on campus? 
my favorite spot would probably be the science center. I actually do not like science or STEM or anything, but the science center is just so pretty and and like and there's trees, there's living trees in it too. And so yeah. it's just a nice, it's just so nice to just sit under a tree and study. That is pretty cool. So Maria, I'll direct this one, this question towards you. <clears throat> so when we're thinking about um, students who may need extra resources and help with their transition to college, what comes to mind for me are possibly low-income students, first-generation students. You know, we have a population on campus about 29 to 26 percent of students identify as students of color. About 15 percent of our students are first generation have not had someone in their family who have experienced college. About 50% of those students, 50% um, of our students are receiving uh, assistance with financial aid. We have students from all over the country. We have students with different cultures, religions, sexual identities, genders. How, how are we supporting these students on campus? Sure. So we, you know, we always say that um, our expectation uh, for the folks that work in the areas that I oversee and in my role and also um, our chief diversity officer, who's vice president, Dean Martinez, um, we always speak to the campus and to colleagues that, you know, this is the work of everyone on our campus. It's an expectation that everyone um, understand, seek out information to be able to support students of marginalized identities. We center those students, we center those identities, we celebrate those identities. Now we do have uh, departments on campus that also their role is to work and support um, specific aspects of identity. So um, we talk about the Days Masolo Center often, that is our cultural center on campus. Um, and that center's role um, is to do programming and education um, and also leadership engagement around not just exploring um, all of the identities that we all hold. So whether that's our gender identity, our sexual orientation, our race and ethnicity, our ability status, any of those things and how all of those intersect and make us up as a person and how we develop you know, develop those identities and then also explore differing identities from our own. You can find all of that programming there. Um, that is the home to the GSU, which is the Gender and Sexuality Union, The um, the Center for Intersexual, Intersectional Feminism, because we just changed our name, um, which is wonderful. Um, so that tells you a little bit about what our groups are thinking through, that they feel we were originally the Women's Center there, um, and that group of students decided that a name change was necessary. So those are, those are things that you get to do in the interim. It's also the home for um, the BLSU, which is the Black and Latinx Student Union, um, also connects the Asian Student Union. Um, who am I missing you all? Because I know I'm missing. La Vanguardia, which is another student group. So it's really home to a lot of these groups who, for whom race and ethnicity, gender and sexuality are a central focus of their work um, and, and their leadership and the programming that they do. So, so that, you know, we always talk about the DMC as a place to connect, engage, challenge yourself, push yourself. Um, we always talk about interfaith and spirituality and religious identity through the chaplain's office. And that department also works with the DMC because we don't just, you know, silo out our identities and decide how we're going to act those out. We really are whole people. So when you're really thinking about what you're wanting to explore and how you want to be supported in your identities, I always recommend connecting with those two departments, but understanding that our academic advisors and you know, when you all arrive to Hamilton, should you choose us, um, we have an advising model that's known as Alex. And those advisors are really there to guide you through, you know, what's known as a hidden curriculum. I think of this specifically as we champion the experiences of our first generation students, that, you know, these people are going to be constant guides for you from the first time that you arrive to Hamilton through year two, year three, year four, and beyond. Um, these folks are the ones that are going to help you identify your cultural capital, identify how you navigate the campus. This is a new advising program, so our incoming students arriving this fall will be the first ones to connect with Alex and the Alex Advisor. So it's a brand new program. Um, it is plugged into the experiential learning component of Hamilton, so this is all going to get woven in. Um, 
so really, you know, those I think are the major highlights. Um, I'm a support space for you. Um, I always say that if you have any questions, you can reach out to me and I make it my business to connect with everyone on campus. Mm -hmm. So I can be a link, a link for you as well. But really um, financial aid, I think Raymond mentioned how financial aid office is really um, a partner for us in this. And as a first generation student um, and really any student, but really first generation students and high needs students, coming to college is expensive and, um, you know, to be real, and it, it can be really confusing. I think Joanne and I were talking about this earlier today, um, you know, navigating financial aid and all of that can be really confusing. So um, we have a partner in the financial aid office and all of that. And if you have any questions, you're welcome to reach out to me because I can talk about this forever. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so there's another question that came up into the chat and I'll direct it towards the students. If you're comfortable answering, awesome. If not, Marie and I can fill in how we feel about things, but I know they want to hear from you. Um, so how diverse and inclusive, how diverse, inclusive and accepting would you all say that the Hamilton community is? I can go ahead and answer that question. Um, so I think one thing I really liked about Hamilton um, that I've like learned so far here is that there's like a lot of different avenues that you can go through to advocate for yourself here on campus. Um, it definitely is difficult as like being a first generation student here. And then also it's a PWIS, it's a primarily white institution. So if you're coming from a neighborhood or like a community that's not white, you will have a, like a difficult time transitioning. But I feel like that's something that is common across a lot of different colleges in the United States. Um, and so I, it's not just a Hamilton issue, it's like a larger issue in here in the United States. Um, but at Hamilton, I think there's like a lot of different avenues you can take that for yourself. So being involved in student assembly and then also getting involved with organizations like BLSU and then like La Vanguardia, you can find like support groups, but then also just ways that you can like, I guess, like reach out to campus partners and like ask for more resources um, for those identities. Yeah. yeah, and I think one of the primary goals of your office, Maria, is connecting students with resources to help you move through these spaces that are on campus that could have be challenging for students that may not have had these experiences before. And again, you know, just something we Maria and I always reiterate is if you tell us, we will figure it out, we will help you. We just need to know. Um, and the sooner you tell us, the quicker we can help you figure out or help you navigate, you know, whatever it is you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if I can add, I mean, you know, to Fatima's point, you're you're entering a space that's considered a predominantly white institution, um, and also in an institution that. Um, is a private school. It's, you know, there's certain wealth here and all of those things. However, mm -hmm. uh, that is not that is not a reason for you to feel like you don't belong, like you shouldn't plug in. And obviously that's, a, that's for you to feel how you feel. Um, but we are, you know, like every other institution, this conversation around equity and inclusion, which when I saw it pop on, up in the chat, I was waiting for the question to come because as it should, otherwise we were going to address it. Um, it's it's important that you realize as student, students entering these spaces, that you belong in these spaces, that you deserve to be here, um, and that you will thrive in these spaces. Um, so we want to make sure that we're, we're there to help guide you through. And like Joanne said, answer questions as they pop up um, and know that in my role, it is my charge along with other folks on campus to make sure that we are addressing um, the needs of students and the needs of differing identities. Um, for some time, um, one thing that I have always celebrated is that Hamilton has thought ahead around, you know, all gender bathrooms and things like that. Now, is that perfect? It is not. No, nowhere it is, but we are we are addressing it as we move through um, the time. But as students come up and and share what their experiences are, we react to those um, to those uh, concerns. Thanks, Maria. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I would just like to add to like going to a predominantly white institution for me from a public school as a person of color was also a bit of a rough transition for me. 
<laughs> just because it's not something I'm used to. But one thing that I and like, of course, like, like there's no sugar coating things. Like, like it's a PWI, so there are going to be instances of like intolerance and stuff, just like like every other institution. But like, one thing that I've really enjoyed about Hamilton College is that I feel like everyone, like the administration and like the students, like they they like acknowledge that like there is there there are these issues and they make efforts to change so i think like when you talk to the students and like the people like in charge like there's just effort to like get better and that's one thing that i really like thanks raymond so i will direct this to our outgoing vp for the qsn network we got to talk about it. We have about 15 minutes left, and we could probably talk about this for hours. Fatima, what's the QSN? Yeah, um, so it consists of the e-board, of the Quest for G-board. So we have like a president, vice president, and a couple of other like class reps um, just for QuestBridge. Um, and we're mostly in charge of making things like, so we've designed this like peer mentoring program just for QuestBridge students. Um, we've also designed an orientation program that we're hoping to implement in for future class years. Um, so a lot of it has to do with creating this community within Hamilton just for Quest for students. Um, just because a lot of us have similar experiences of like being low income and first generation students. Um, we want to create that community here at Hamilton um, for those students to feel supported um, throughout their four years here. Um, and after that as well as like as we have more like we have like our first class year this year that's going to graduate. So we have to think about like how we're going to support them after they graduate as well. So a lot of it goes into the QSN. Um, and that's the main reason why I want to become a VP um, for QuestBridge was because like there's something I'm really passionate about. I feel like there's like I would love to see more students like me um, to come to colleges like Hamilton. So I think creating things like the QSN was really important for me. Do you have a favorite event that QSN does? Um, I think so a lot like this last semester we did like a tie-dye event. Um I don't know, that was so fun. So we were we brought like white t-shirts and then we bought like the tie-dyes and we put them in water guns and we just like designed shirts with the water guns. It was like a very like relaxing event, especially like right before finals as well. So I think it was like a it was like a needed like I don't know. I enjoyed that event. I just didn't enjoy my black and purple hands for four days, <laughs> but it was fun. Um, and there are other events that the students will put on throughout the year. Um, and there are things that Maria and I will put on for the students. So we try to make sure if there's a topic that we think would be good for you to hear about. Uh, we'll do some programming around that. There's also a QSN chapter um, that's about 35 minutes away. So we're hoping to get all of our students connected with them. Um, we require, like we said, first year students are required to have a peer to peer mentor and we require check-ins. So if we haven't seen you milling around campus, we will bribe you with food, know that it is a bribe. Um, we try to pick some place really fun and tasty, and I think we've done a good job, right, of food selection, and we just get together and have a meal, because sometimes you just need a meal, and we just need a moment, so we'll carve out some time in all our busy schedules just to get together and love on each other for a minute, um, and just make sure that everyone is good, and it's a good opportunity for everyone to come together. Um, Maria, can you specifically speak about your role, though, within the QSN? Sure. So um, so we say that, you know, Joanne gets connected to scholars as they're coming in and applying and moving through that process. And then you all cross the threshold into my world. Um, and so, but we still work together, right? I follow you, yes. <laughs> yes. Um, so we, you know, in my role, um, I just do a lot of, of assessing on what resources are students needing. Um, Joanne mentioned the check-in portions that we do. We do do check-ins with all of our first year scholars. This year it'll probably be with our first and second year scholars because last year was such an odd year. <laughs> so, um, so we'll probably do check-ins with all of our first and second year scholars and we do bribe with food. Um, and a lot of times it's because we wanna check in. 
right? You get very micro focused on your studies and we wanna make sure that you're taking care of yourself. Um, that tends to go by the wayside when students are really focused. So, so really making sure that you're getting the resources that you need, that you're getting questions answered, um, that if you have, I don't know, some sort of emergency need that we can plug you in um, to get the support that you need for that. Um, any issues, residential life, anything that has to do with your, your experience on campus, um, I would be the main contact uh, for supporting the QSN. So as, as a co-advisor to the group. Most likely, you know, if you come to me, I will support you, but I will also tell Maria that she needs to reach out to you or you need to go and find her. Mm -hmm. um, but that's just kind of how we work. So we tag team and if whoever you're more comfortable with doesn't matter to us, we just want you to um, know that you have support. Yeah, we're also very much about telling us, telling you how amazing you are. Um, and the students that are on can tell you how we just, we are so, we so love our Clusbridge scholars. I can't say that enough. And I think I embarrass people often, but I can't mm -hmm. help it. That's a part of it. <laughs> Yeah. So we had a question more about process and the application process, which I'm happy to apply or to answer rather. So the question is, if we apply through the National College Match, are there other questions or applications we have to do for Hamilton other than the QuestBridge application? So the answer is yes. Um, so once you apply, know that there is an additional supplement that you will have to fill out. It will not take you very long, um, but it is something that will come to you once you submit your application. Also know that there are ways to enhance your candidacy. So at Hamilton, we do offer interviews for students. If you have art that you do and you would like to share your art with us, know that you can submit that. Um, if you sing and someone has recorded you singing, I would love to hear you know, your vocal abilities. If you are a dancer and you videoed that, you can do that as well. Um, there's also a couple additional ways that will come to you via your application and your application checklist portal. Uh, we will make sure to put the link up in the chat for you to check out and make sure that you have any questions and the requirements for application are also listed on that application. Uh, we have about eight minutes left, so I'll stick on the application process, show further interest. We just chatted about that. Um, so one question is, do Questbridge students have to submit the Common App or can they use the Questbridge application? You can use your Questbridge application. There is a certain point if you're not matched with us or any college that you can use your Questbridge application. You just have to be um, vigilant with those deadlines and know that we will continue to let you know um, when things are due, but you can submit your Questbridge application or submit the Common App if that's what you would choose to do. Um, questions about financial aid. So here at Hamilton, we meet 100% of a student's demonstrated need. So when you sit down to apply to colleges, know that money should not be a factor. Um, for students who are looking at the cost of attendance, you know, Raymond st stated that it is expensive and part of his decision was based off of financial aid. Know that we are very proud to be one of a handful of schools that's both need blind as well as uh, will meet 100% of your need. If your family has specific questions, I would encourage you to reach out directly to our financial aid department and they would be happy to walk you through. We are so lucky um, because we have our own designated person in financial aid and she's on top of it. So if something comes up for you, whether it's the summer before you attend, whether you're here, whether you're home during the holidays, um, Marianne is amazing and you can contact her directly and she'll be happy to assist you. So I have two more questions and I'll answer, I'll ask one for each one of each class. So let's go with Maya24. How has being a Questbridge Scholar and part of the QSN influence other aspects of your Hamilton experience? Yeah, I think we spoke a little bit about, you know, being an underrepresented or marginalized student on campus. And I feel like Q the QSN has really given me um, a community, which is a word I've used a lot tonight, but it's true. 
um, in regards to that and has really been helpful in general, whether it be, you know, with just talking with other people on campus that might have similar experiences or be facing, you know, similar issues or whether it be financial aid, I feel like I've had people that I can connect with. And it has also made me a lot more confident just with my abilities, um, you know, attending Hamilton, because I feel like so often with other QuestBridge kids, I tend to encounter this um, thing called imposter syndrome when it comes to higher education. But the truth is that, you know, you do belong here and that you can be successful. And I feel like being part of the QSN network has really helped me, you know, come to terms with that and increase my confidence with that. So Maya, thank you. Uh, Maya23, would you like to answer that question as well? Um, yeah, so I, I've i actually come across a couple of opportunities to help other QuestBridge scholars out. Um, so for example, like this summer, I'm doing a Levitt group research project, and I actually got approached to do this project because I was part of QuestBridge, um, and that was really cool. Um, and I'm also helping out with like a film project. I just emailed um, one of the QuestBridge scholars being like, hey, I can help out with this. Um, and I'll, I'll be studying remotely and not remotely. I'll be studying in France next year, all next year. So it was nice to be able to work that out where I could help her out on her project remotely. Awesome. So Fatima and Raymond, I have a different question for you. So what tips do you have for these college prep scholars as they begin their application process? Let's go with Raymond just did it so let's hear okay so my biggest tip for the college application process is to first of all do everything early it doesn't matter what it is whether it's writing your essays like doing a college search getting your teacher recommendations doing your financial aid stuff like there's not harm in doing things early at all because like the deadline will come quicker than you expect and like i feel like everyone i talk to have has had this issue where and that's the biggest regret everyone has had just doing things early earlier because it just gives you more time and also like if you have the means to like i guess tour schools touring schools would be something that that's really helpful like if you have the financial means and times of course that's something i regret not doing i mean of course i have a pandemic but yeah as things open, that's something I would advise. That's great advice, Raymond. Um, and I'm just going to throw in a shameless plug for a team admission here. So we have a lot of opportunities for students to visit virtually. If you're able to come to campus, excellent. If not, know that we have something called Tour From Your Sofa. So it's one of our tour guides, which team I can tell you. They walk around with selfie sticks and they show you, it's kind of like a, a view of campus from their own perspective. It's a one-on-one -on -one interactive experience. It's you, you may have someone else with you, um, but it is an amazing experience. And if you head right to hamilton.edu slash discover, you'll see all of our virtual offerings we have. Um, we'll start ramping things up, but know that you can check any of those events out. Um, and if you're interested in doing a virtual interview, we highly recommend that. Um, it's with one of our senior fellows and information to sign up for that is listed right on the website. All right, Fatima, what's your advice? I think that like, like the second what Raymond said as well, like just starting your process early. Um, then also like just having confidence in like your abilities as like a student and like in like abilities as a person, I guess as well, um, that like, if you're worried about like not being able to get into a school, I say, don't worry about that until after you, uh, you're you getting like your response back from that college, just because I feel like it's always worth just submitting the application. Um, like there's no harm done, so. Very much so. So we have about two minutes left. I really, really loved chatting with all of you. Um, and I know we could stay here and talk about QSN and QuestBridge for days and hours. So let's just wrap up um, and we'll all answer the same question. Maya23, we'll start with you. Favorite thing about Hamilton? Um, I'm gonna go with community. Love it. Fatima? 
This is very, very specific, but I love the climbing wall here at Hamilton. It's like my favorite place. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Raymond? I like the academics and the uh, academic culture here and financial aid. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Maya24. I would definitely say that the fact that Hamilton just offers so many opportunities for you to really, you know, explore your identity and get to know who you are and what your passions are and what you truly care about, which, you know, applies to a lot of the different areas that the others have mentioned, like community and academics. Awesome. And Maria. Um, so for me, certainly the students um, and I'm um, I say this with all honesty, um, our QuestBridge scholars are really some of my favorites. <laughs> They're pretty awesome. They are very awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I want to do a, just a round of applause for all of you. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. We really loved hearing our, your voices and I hope College Prep Scholars, I hope you really enjoyed our discuss discussion. If you want to stay connected with us and learn more about our community, like I said, head to hamilton.edu slash discover. This is always updated and we'll also send you tons of invites via email. Before everyone heads out, if you want to put your emails in the chat in case students have questions for you um, or want to touch base with you personally, that would be awesome. If not, I want to say thank you so much for joining us. We hope to see you soon. And if you need anything, feel free to reach out. And have a great evening. Good night, everyone.